and that is someone very dear to our community slipped into eternity. Dr. Francine Aputa, who I have known all of my life and who had committed her life to the cause of our core Christian values of loving all people, restoration, reconciliation. She's a teacher, artistry, amazing woman of God. And literally, her family is a part of the reason I'm here today. I told this a, a little bit the other day, but her father is the founder of the great Calvary Baptist Church of Pacoima, Hillary T. Broadus. He's so, pro so profound that they even have an elementary school named after him. Because of his work in the community, he taught us how to work with our hands. At the time, I mean, our deacon board, a head deacon would be jealous. It, our deacon board, we must have had 20, 25 deacons. The mother's board would sit up in the front wearing their white. And when my grandparents took guardianship of me, they walked me right to Calvary Baptist Church. And it was in that church that I learned all the stories of the Bible, that I found my love for God. Even when founder Hillary T. stepped aside and William T., the brother of Sister Francine, took over. I used to have, and I've lost it now, but I had a picture of me drawing him in church. He had his afro. His afro was perfect. But I don't know, maybe seeing him might have put the seed in me that one day I'd be a pastor. And when the school system said he needs to go to special education, my grandmother pulled me out of that school, walked me into the doors of Rosa Broadus, the first lady, and she taught me and tutored me and worked with me and then delivered me back to the school system in which they tested me and said, oh, he's gifted. I can only imagine how many of our kids are gifted that have been labeled the wrong way. So can you do me a favor and just put your hands together for the life and legacy of Francine Aputa, who in this valley gave so much And listen, she didn't care what your background was. She was going to love you. And I thank God, amen, there's members of the Broadest family. She is Francine Broadest Oputa. Amen. Sister Pam is here. I know you got that because she's waving in the back. Can you give her a round of applause? And their family, the Broadest family is here. They stayed over. But I, I would be remiss if we didn't honor that legacy. And that means we have to keep it going. Isn't that right? And children of God, listen, we have our doctrine and we have our belief, but we have to find common ground with all groups if we can, because the Bible says follow peace with all men and holiness by which no man shall see the Lord. You know, so like I told you guys, one of my, my brother, the, you know, I call him brother because of the ethnicity brother part, a nation of Islam. I said, let's get together. We got to do something. You know, he said, well, Allah, I said, wait, well, hold on now. No, we don't, no, we don't, don't, let's, let's not bring that in it. Let's, let's just, let's just bring the books for kids in it. And let's meet on the books for kids because our community needs all of us to come together for what's right. And guess what I love about being a child of God? That if I'm wrong, I didn't lose nothing. I didn't lose nothing. That's why I don't argue with folk, y'all. If I'm wrong, that means I lived a wonderful life of a delusion. I thought that I was speaking in tongues. I thought I was filled with the spirit. I was dancing and shouting. 
But when I got to the end of my life, if all I am is molecules, then it won't matter no way. I won't have no memory or nothing. But guess what? If I'm right and you're wrong, and there is a God, and he is a judge, and he says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, come on, somebody, then you're in big trouble. Come on, put your hands together. God bless you. I won't hold you long, I promise you. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Oh, my. <laughs> God is so good. Isn't he good? Hebrews 11 and just one verse of scripture. In verse number 23, when you have it, can you say amen? Let's read it together. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Turn now to the book of Exodus. Chapter 2. Verse 1, it says, read it with me. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him, how many? Three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river brink. And his sister, stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the figs, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women <laughs> that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thy, thee thy wages. And the woman took the child. <laughs> Y'all know that was his mother, right? <laughs> and nursed it, and the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name, what now? Moses. And said, Because I drew him out of the water. Can you say amen? I want to talk to you this morning about fearless faith. Fearless faith. Everyone say fearless faith. It's interesting that the writer here in the book of Hebrews, which we believe was Paul, itemizes out and I want you to note the verbiage in Hebrews, if you could turn back. It's interesting that he uses a verbiage that seems as though he's attributing faith to Moses, but rather the faith is being attributed to the family. 
because it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. We know, based on the study of scripture, that the children of Israel ended up in Egypt, which is representative of bondage, is representative of sin, is representative of the world. They ended up there stuck for 400 years. I got to preach this morning. They ended up there stuck for 400 years, and as they were there, they began to multiply. Everyone say multiply. And the king began to see that they were multiplying so fast that they might have reason to overtake or fight up against the Egyptians. So what he did was he put burdens on them. Because anytime the devil see you getting ahead, he tries to burden you. Oh, I got to talk to somebody now. He'll try to weigh you down so you don't get to your destination at God's appointed time. But the Lord had put something in the genetic makeup of the children of Israel that allowed for them, even under pressure, to thrive. I'm so glad of my background. Hey, Amen. I come from a people that even when you put them under pressure, they thrive. Amen. One comedian years ago said, we don't die, we multiply. And I want you to know that some of you, if you're questioning who you are, just look over your shoulder and see all that the devil tried to do to you. And here it is, you still got a job. How you still got a job? How is it that you still have income? How is it that you still have a reasonable abortion of health? But the Lord allowed for the children of Israel to experience the same thing. The burdens got heavier and heavier. And then finally, the Pharaoh makes a declaration of death to get the people to kill their children. You guys know how we feel about that in this church. Because literally, I believe the cure to cancer has been killed multiple times in the womb. I believe that the heal to some of our ailments in our community is walking down the street right now talking to themselves. God gives everyone that comes into this earth some type of problem they are designed to solve. And if we kill our children, oh my, I got to talk today. If we kill our children before they even reach middle school, if we destroy their dreams and their aspirations, if we tell them you're going to be just like your mama, you're going to be just like your daddy, you're, if we kill their dreams then, what we're doing is killing ourselves because God puts in every soul some type of problem that they're designed to solve. Oh, God, I got to work this morning just for about nine more minutes. I want you to understand that this is what was happening to the children of Israel. But they begin to push up against the power. Can I talk to you today? They begin to push up against the king's ordinance that said, kill every male child. They said, no, we can't do that. We can't kill our children. So they started hiding their children, and they were finding ways to get their children, amen, to be able to make it past birth, make it past two years old, make it past three years old, because the ordinance was to kill the male child, amen. The devil wants to snuff out our Christian legacy wants to snuff out the legacy of Christ in our life. And, and if he can get the men, y'all not going to talk to me right now, if he can get the men all in a bad place, get the men all out of their mind, get the men not staying at home, amen, get the man not loving one wife, get the man, amen, being a hoe, amen, running out there in the street, sleeping with everything, glory be to God. If he can get the men, if he can get us, come on, men, talk back to me. Don't be looking all around, I'm talking to you, amen, man to man. If he can get us jacked up, the house will be jacked up. 
If he can get us not to love our children and never tell them that we love them. If he can get us to walk when we get back home and say, I paid our bills. And, and we kick the dog and slap the cat. And everyone is running in fear. Our children will go to school and not have the legacy that they're supposed to have. But I thank God that we got some holy men in here. Come on and talk back to me, man. Glory be to God. He wanted to kill you, brother man, when you were in the womb. And your mother said, although this is a child out of wedlock, I can't let him go. Oh, I got to work with somebody today. She had a thought about it. There was a Planned Parenthood right down the street. But she said, no, 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 no. I know I might not get no help from the father, but I still got to bring him to pass. I, 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 I know that I ain't got enough money, but, but, but I got to just give him a shot. Y'all not going to help me here. And this is what the children of Israel did. They said, I got to give my baby a shot. I got to give my baby a shot. And the Bible says that it became very clear to Levi's uh, children, amen. And, and he took a, a wife of Levi. It became very clear that when she looked at her child, the Bible says he was goodly. Which means when she looked in his eyes, she, she might have been doubting, might have been thinking about obeying the king's order and destroying her own child. But when she looked into his eyes and saw the goodliness in it, I wish I had some mothers in here, amen, that looked into the eyes of their children and said, I know something special going to happen with my baby. I don't know what happened with my cousin. I don't know what happened to the family. But I know something good going to happen for my baby. I ain't got enough women in here, amen, praising God. Uh, amen. I wish I had have some holy women that can look at their children and even though your child is out there kind of cutting up right now you remember the look you gave them when they were a child and you say my baby gonna make it come on women in here and say my baby gonna make it my baby gonna make it my child gonna make it amen and I know they got sent home from school but they gonna make it I know they don't know how to sit in a chair for longer than 30 minutes right now but that's just because they got a lot of energy quit calling them bad Oh, God, I said nine minutes. I need nine more minutes. Amen. Quit calling them bad. Say, you're very energetic. You have to control your energy. You don't say you bad. Don't call them bad. No, no, no. Say, you're just rambunctious. You don't, you, you're very creative. Amen. Even when they're breaking rules, they're creative in breaking the rules. Say, I see that you're very inquisitive and very creative, but I need you to be very creative on how to be obedient. Y'all not helping me here. Amen. You got to love your baby because if you don't, the devil will. If you don't love your child, the devil will. If you don't, if you don't bring your child in, amen, Pyru blood will bring them in. Bulldogs will bring them in. Gang members will bring them in. Y'all still not talking back to me here. If you don't love your child, the drug system will bring them in. If you don't love your child, the police system will bring them in. If you don't love your child, the criminal system will bring them in. If you don't love your child, the educational system, amen, which is a mess, will educate your child how to hate you and not love of God. So the Bible makes it clear that she hid him, watched his ministers three months. And when she could not hide him anymore, when she had to put him out the house, it took faith for her to know what to do. God gave her a word. I taught you all that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which means that faith is not wishful thinking. It means that God has given you a word that has opened up your ear, and that gives birth to faith. When you talk about biblical faith, it's not me standing on my own thought. It's me standing on the word of God. It's because God said it that I say it's settled. Because whether I believe it or not, God still will do what he said he's going to do. Can I preach to you this morning? Understand that the woman of God, she began to hear a word from God about how to keep her baby safe. The word came and said, go ahead and get the bull rushes and put them together. Get slime and I want you to make an ark. I want you to make an ark and put your baby on the Nile River. Y'all not talking back to me here. I want you to put your baby in a dangerous place, but because you use my instruction for the ark, uh, it's going to protect your child uh, wherever they go. 
I just believe that some of you have doubted the promises of God this morning, and I want you to step out of fear and into faith. When God gives you a direction, you step out on faith, and even if your family don't agree with it, you still got to stand flat foot. They don't understand why you still stand in the apartment after you got a raise, but God is showing you something. Uh, God is showing you how he's about to raise you up, uh, and all you got to do is be obedient to the word of God. She was obedient to the word of God until she put her child in an ark and allowed him to float upstream. But I want you to know when your future is in the hands of God, it will always float to favor. I wish I had 20 people in here that understands that your future is about to float to favor. You're about to float, amen, to favor. The Bible says that she was on, amen, the child was in the, the Nile, amen, and it was floating, and no doubt there were alligators, amen. No doubt there were very evil things in the river, but when you float it to God, it's going to float to favor. Some of you can testify in here today that the favor of God is on your life because you know you didn't do nothing in order for it to come. When we talk about the favor of God, we're dealing with the unmerited favor, and that means it's not because I went to the University of Washington on full scholarship, and it's not because I have two master's degrees from National University, and it's not because I work in the public school system that I'm somebody. God has a way of taking your degrees and making them worth nothing, because there go I, but by the grace of God. I know that it was because of the grace of God, amen, that I made it through the streets of Pacoima. I know that it was because of the grace of God that I made it through being rejected and subjected to all types of wickedness. I know that it's because of the grace of God that even when gang violence and even when gang affiliation was a part of seemingly my trajectory, the Lord said no. Can I talk to you today? The Lord said no. And when God says no, the the devil can't do nothing about it. I want you to understand that when she hid him for three months, uh, she was acting out the story of Christ. Can I get you home now? It was the story of Christ always that she was acting out because even Pharaoh's daughter called Moses, uh, called his name Moses because he was drawn out of the water. Well, I want you to know in the same way the Lord saw his people bound on earth and he had a remedy. But this remedy was him wrapped in flesh and coming to dwell among us. He put his son Jesus in a precarious situation because he allowed for him to be born of a virgin girl. He allowed Jesus to be born in a place where scrutiny should have taken out his self-esteem, but he still allowed for his child to thrive. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I want you to understand that the same death sentence that Pharaoh sent out for all the male children is the same death sentence that Herod sent out in the days of Jesus. In the days of Jesus, Herod said, kill all the children two years or younger. And Mary and Joseph, they went to Egypt. Y'all not going to help me now. They went to Egypt for three months just like Moses, his mother, had covered him. So now Moses and Jesus are types of each other because they are now both being hidden in Egypt. But I want you to understand that Jesus didn't stay in Egypt and neither did Moses. Moses was in Egypt just so he could grow up to get all of the education and all of the worldly riches of that place just for him to come out to deliver his people. And in the same way Jesus was in, G in Egypt for three months but when he came out he came out with the power of God I want you to understand that Jesus now becomes our helper and our keeper to help us overcome uh, the fear that is in our life no doubt Mary had to overcome fear just as the Levitical girl had to overcome fear fear will make you restless and fear will have you have 
have mental disorder and fear will cause your health to wane and fear will cause you to be anxious and fear will keep you up at night. But I'm telling somebody you need to break from fear and step into faith. Because, amen, the king is ordering you to do one thing. But I want you to know that there's a lot of kings on earth, but you serve the king of kings. Can I talk to somebody like I feel? Notice now that the faith of Moses' family was that they decided not to obey the order of the king. Because we have mayors and governors and presidents and kings around this world that may give us an order that's not in consistency with the word of God. And I want you to understand that you serve the king of kings and you have to be obedient to your king before you bow down to another king. I only got about 50 of you with me now because I've lived this life just a little while and I've seen the intimidation of the enemy try to cause me to live in fear tried to tell me not to say Jesus in school and you can't talk about God and can't say nothing about the Holy Spirit but the devil is an absolute inequivocal liar because I'm under order of my king and I'd rather, amen, be scared of not the king that can kill my body, but I gotta be nervous about the king that can kill my body and soul in hell. So the Lord called me to tell you that there's such a thing called fearless faith. It is a faith that says even when the laws of this world are against it, I still have to step in. Jesus overcomes the laws of physics by being born of a woman and he overcomes the laws of physiology by allowing himself glory be to God uh, to be in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, he fasted in such a way that God had to be on his side. He got the victory over the laws of the spiritual realm by putting the devil behind him. He got the victory over physics, amen, by walking on water. He got the victory over chemistry by turning water into wine. He got the victory over biology by calling Lazarus back from the dead. I got to work right now. He got the victory over the laws of death because he was hung up on a cross for and he was put in a tomb for three days and, and he got up on the third day. I want you to know that you got to walk in your faith. I want you to look at somebody and say it's time for you to walk in your faith. You've been sitting there on the sideline, but it's time for you to stand up and say fear get under my feet. I'm a child of the king, and if Moses' family could have that kind of faith, then I got enough faith to put my dreams on the river and say, Lord, I send them to you. I'm not going to abort another dream. I'm not going to abort another innovation. I'm not going to abort another, another, uh, another dream. I, I'm going to move in the power of God. Give your neighbor a high five, and it says it's time for faith. It's time for your faith to rise. Y'all not helping me here. You had enough faith to sit in that chair and believe that it was going to hold you. You had enough faith to get in that car and believe it was going to transport you. You had enough faith to put on your clothes and believe that it was going to cover you. You had enough faith to take a deep breath and believe it would lead to another. The same kind of faith you have in the chair and the same kind of faith you have in the car. The Lord says, I want you to have faith in my son Jesus uh, because he's the only way. Uh, give somebody else a high five and say, stop being so scared. Uh, when I was growing up, they would call you a scaredy cat. Uh, they would say, you're too scared. I, I'm looking for some bold saints in here. Some, some saints that says, I heard God and I'm going to walk in it. Uh, I heard
heard from God and I'm gonna step in it. Uh, I heard from God and I'm about to believe it. Uh, I heard from God and I'm about to praise on it. Uh, I heard from God and I'm about to wave my hands. Uh, I heard from God and I'm about to do my dance uh, because I cannot live in fear. Uh, fear will ground the blessings of God. Uh, fear will destroy the promises of God. Uh, you gotta step out of fear and into faith. Uh, and you gotta say, if God is for me, uh, he's more than the world against me. Uh, and you gotta tell the devil, you can't make me doubt him uh, because I know too much about him. Uh, God is trying to move you into the next season of your life, uh, but it will require for you to have faith. Uh, faith of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Uh, faith will cause you to walk on the waters of destruction. Uh, faith will cause you to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Uh, blessed going in and blessed going out. Uh, blessed will your barn uh, Blessed in the cattle. Uh, blessed in the city. Come on, somebody. Uh, give somebody a high five. Uh, it's, I got to walk in faith. Uh, my faith is a mustard seed, uh, but when I put it in the ground, uh, it's going to grow up to be a tree. Uh, you got to walk in your faith. Uh, you got to say, I got to trust in God uh, with all my heart uh, and lean not to my own understanding. Uh, in all my way, I got to acknowledge him uh, and he's going to direct my path. Uh, come on, so say yeah. Uh, Moses made it to victory. Uh, Jesus made it to the cross. Uh, Moses made it to Mount Sinai. Uh, Jesus made it to Mount Transfiguration. Uh, Moses took the people across. Uh, but Jesus has brought us in uh, because we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, I dare you give God a praise uh, and say, Lord, uh, I'm stepping out of fear uh, and into my faith. Stand up all over the church. We're going home. And the only reason I stopped it's because Sister Watson's favorite movie is an hour and 45 minutes. Listen, it doesn't mean you're not going to feel in your body a little trembling about doing the will of God. But what it means is when you walk by faith, you say, no matter what I'm feeling in here, I still have to do what God called me to do. I was coaching for Granada Hills High School, and we took a team. I don't mean no harm if any other boys are watching, but we were sorry. We were sorry. We wasn't, we wasn't good at all. But we coached them and we built them up and got them up and got them to do things that they didn't know that they could do. And we ended up going into the playoffs. Yeah, we did. Watch this. And so we had our kids in the locker room. I went out to the field. They put us against Dorsey, which is one of the baddest schools in LA. And when I walked on that field, I saw grown men <laughs> so I knew that if my kids came out they, they weren't even gonna go on the field so y'all know I'm a preacher so I went in the locker room we gonna get them we gonna tear them up you gonna run faster than you ever ran I got them all pumped up and they came out with tears in their eyes <laughs> It lasted for about a quarter. <laughs> but I was trying to keep them from looking. Are y'all hearing me? I didn't want them to lose the game before it started. Some of us are losing the game before it even started. How do you know God is not moving you to a healthy relationship? How do you know? How oh, now all men is dogs. No, you just happen to like some. There's a lot of good men out there. 
But you said you like that thug life, and guess what? That's what you got. You didn't want the nerd. Come on, women, and say amen. amen. You didn't want that nerd. Little goofy kid, got his glasses on studying. You didn't like him. And he was following you all around the school. You wanted Ron, dog. And Ron Dog be cutting up. He getting saved now. I'm not Ron Dog is in this church. He, he getting saved. But I'm just saying, before Christ, he was cutting up. Come on, brothers. Hey man, you didn't want that nice good girl. You wanted hot toddy. What's what's the, the lady, you know, they got all that plastic on in their body now. What the, you know the lady she was. I ain't even gonna say the name, because then y'all gonna look them up. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And brothers, you wanted that. Got good, good, good Christian girl sitting right in church. She ain't good enough. She got the Holy Ghost. She treats you right. She cook you a little meal. She come home every day. She don't use up a lot of money. But you wanted that. So now you got it. All oh, these women's is gold diggers. Well, you ain't really got a lot of gold anyway. Ain't none of us got that much gold. Come on now. <laughs> we ain't got that much <laughs> to be fighting over. <laughs> I saw one video. I saw two people fighting. I said, what they fight for? I looked. I was like, you fighting over that? <laughs> listen, children of God, let's walk in faith. And listen, if you see me on the side of the road with my head down, Y'all got to tap me and say, Pastor, it's time to walk by faith. You got to believe God. Am I in the right church? Come on, lift your hands all over the house. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. We've been here, dear Lord God, long enough to worship you, to have communion, to hear your word, to give our offering. But now, Lord, I truly ask that you would break the chains of fear in this house. Fear to be a great woman of God. Fear to be a great man of God. Fear to come out of that lifestyle. Fear, fear, fear. Lord, I give them faith of a mustard seed. Give us the faith of Moses' parents who said no matter what the king says, I got to listen to the king of kings. 